Hello everyone, welcome to the part 2 of our discussion about curriculum implementation. This time, we're going to talk about the role of stakeholders as well as the issues in curriculum implementation. Stakeholders, who are they? Well, they are the individuals or institutions that are interrelated in the school curriculum. In other words, they are the ones who put into action and give life to the curriculum. What about the learners? Well, they are the very reason a curriculum is developed. Simply because they make and then make the curriculum by their active and direct involvement. And how each individual learner contributes to the realization of a planned curriculum would depend on the interaction and internalization of the different learning activities. Let's first talk about the role of learners in curriculum implementation. They are the primary stakeholders in the curriculum. And they were classified according to their age, sex, physical, mental, and emotional development, cultural background, and aspiration and personal goals. Because each learner varies from one another and by classifying how they differ, the teacher can be able to come up with ideas on how to address their different needs. Now let's talk about teachers as curriculum developers and implementers. Planning and writing the curriculum are the primary role of teacher. A teacher is a curriculum maker or curriculus. Teacher writes a curriculum daily through a lesson plan, unit plan, or a yearly plan. And teacher addresses the goals, needs, and interests of the learners by creating experiences from where the students can learn. So, teachers design and which is, and modifies curriculum to suit the students' characteristics, and they even sometimes take part on textbook committee, faculty selection boards, school evaluation committees, or textbook writers themselves. Therefore, they are considered as architects of school curriculum. Now let's have curriculum managers and administrators. They supervise curriculum implementation, select and recruit new teachers, admit students and procure equipment and materials needed for effective learning. They also plan for the improvement of school facilities and physical plans. They have privilege to command but at the same time to lead the institution. Meaning to say they are responsible for the final decision making in terms of uh, the school purpose and they are responsible for the kind of curriculum their school will offer and how these are implemented. Now let's have parents as supporters of the curriculum. It simply means that the parents are the best supporters of the school, especially because they are the ones paying for their child's education. Effective parental involvement in school affairs may be linked to parent education program, which is central to high quality educational experiences of the children. And parents' involvement extends from the confine of school to the home. And in most schools, the parent association is organized. Remember PTA or Parental Teacher Association? Especially back when we were in elementary and high school. Meetings were held at school and parents are invited so that they can be informed about the plans that the school is trying to make. And of course, their suggestions and comments are being highly valued since it's for the welfare of their own children. Now let's talk about community members as curriculum resources. The community members may provide materials and the existing local community can very well institute for what are needed to implement the curriculum. Respected community members may be included in school boards. This is why sometimes we notice that in schools, some community members are even invited as resource speakers because they can provide local and indigenous knowledge in the school curriculum. Lastly, let's talk about other stakeholders in curriculum implementation. First, we have professional organizations. So they are being asked by the curriculum especially to contribute in curriculum review because they have voice in licensure examination, curriculum enhancement, and etc. Next, we have the government. So it is represented by DepEd for basic education curricula, CHED for tertiary and graduate education curricula, and TESDA 
or technical and vocational programs. And third, we have Professional Regulation Commission. So this third agency has high stake in school's curricula because graduates of the different tertiary degrees must be certified as professionals. Now let's proceed to the issues of implementation. Number one, for involvement of teachers in matters relating to curriculum implementation. The first issue of implementation is poor involvement of teachers in matters relating to curriculum implementation, either in planning or reform, that make good performances impossible, despite the teacher's methodological competence. Unfortunately, teachers are not involved in this stage of curriculum process. Well, this is really an issue because according to Ibrahim in once, the involvement of teachers in curriculum planning induces good quality into the curriculum and it enriches the activities and also makes them more worthwhile. The conditions under which education can be made to serve the express aspiration of any nation revolve around the quality of the teachers, and this quality will be optimally enhanced if the teachers are fully involved in the curriculum planning and other curriculum processes, and not only in the classroom implementation. The teacher takes the final decision as regard the actual learning experiences to be provided. So, not involving or incorporating him in the planning and development process is like separating the curriculum from the instruction. The second issue is excess contents added to the curriculum to be covered by both the students and teachers possess serious challenges in curriculum implementation. Some global and emerging issues such as family life education, citizenship education, education on HIV or AIDS and drug abuse among others which are recently introduced in the school curriculum as contents to be learned by students or pupils without extending the instructional hours affect its implementation. Some teachers are having issues with such topics already, hence making its implementation a challenge. In addition to the already existing subjects, time allotted for implementation of this heavy academic loads is not adequate enough. A followed-up issue on this matter is that when these new courses are introduced or included in the existing curriculum, new personnel who specialize in them were not usually employed, neither do government send the old staff on training on how to implement them. Number three, curriculum is implemented without the resources. The third issue is concerned with the provision and distribution of materials that will enhance the achievement of the teaching and learning objectives. Such materials include textbooks, instructional desks, etc. And this is because of the curriculum contents to be effectively implemented at any stage of the educational system. Some materials which are expected to complement the classroom activities of the teacher should be provided for effective implementation at the classroom levels of any educational programs. The main reason for the failure is the lack of understanding of the culture of the school by both experts outside the school system and educators in the system. Successful implementation of curriculum requires understanding the power relationships, the traditions, the roles, and responsibilities of individuals in school system. The fourth issue of curriculum implementation is non-involvement of society's culture in the curriculum implementation. Curriculum is the instrument through which the society via the school educates its citizens, both adult and young. Therefore, the quality of education of every society is subject to the quality of society's curriculum. Even though large sums of money are spent on implementing new curriculum, several of these efforts have failed. And the main reason for the failure is the lack of understanding of the culture of the school by both experts outside the school system and educators in the system. And successful implementation of curriculum requires understanding the power relationships, the traditions, and the roles and responsibilities of individuals in the school system. Number five, planning the implementation. Planning process addresses needs and changes necessary and requisite resource for carrying out intended actions. Putting it differently, implementation planning should focus on the following factors like people, which includes learners, educationists, policymakers, and the like, programs and processes. 
although these three factors are inseparable, usually we consider any one of them for implementation. For example, the opinion has been that to really facilitate the implementation of a major change, curriculum developers need to deal primarily with the people factor. Some, however, consider that the primary focus should be the program. The argument here seems to be that people will adapt if we furnish them with different ways to meet the objectives of program through planning, and this will facilitate smooth implementation of the curriculum. And number six, communication. Communication is the next important issue that influences curriculum implementation stage. We know that communication deals with message, so sending and receiving it is not sufficient enough to ensure that communication will be effective or that messages sent will be accurate or of high quality. The curriculum specialist, therefore, must be sure that the communication network is comprehensive and that avenues for sending messages exist at all levels of the curriculum implementation process. For instance, if we want to communicate some factual details about new program being launched, we can use such means as letters, memos, articles, books, bulletins, research reports, or speeches. Supposing the new program is a major change from the existing one, we can communicate it effectively through workshops, conferences, um, demonstrations, and the like. Thus, it is essential that we should be able to create an atmosphere conductive to effective communication among all the members of the educational staff and community. Further, we need to inform them that their views are welcome and that they are all they all have responsibility to participate in sending and processing messages of curriculum implementation activity. And for generalization, curriculum is the vehicle that contains the good. The teacher is a driver who delivers the goods to the consumers of the goods who are the learners. Therefore, the teacher is at the center of activities in curriculum implementation. And that's it for our discussion about curriculum implementation. Thank you so much for listening.